I'd like to chat with you for a few minutes about ProSelect's Album Builder. Now, in ProSelect, it's called Working With Books. And really what I find amazing is, is when I'm out, out at different events and different shows or teaching, and I show people the Album Builder, they go, oh my god, I had no idea that existed in there, and that is so cool. People are really amazed at what it can do. The ProSelect Album Builder is so, so powerful. As a matter of fact, just a couple years ago, ProSelect won the Professional Photographer Magazine's award in the album building category. Now keep in mind, ProSelect is not an album building software. That's just one small part of really what ProSelect is. The Album Builder is extremely robust. You'd really be surprised at what it can do. Let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start out by opening a new album here. So we're going to go to File and we're going to go to Open Recent Album. All right, now this is an album that I've already done some work on here. I want to close my image sets over there. And now we're going to go to our Working With Books. So Working With Books is one of our Working With modes. Well, if we look over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see our little book icons here. Now these book icons, in the Pro version, I can actually create up to five different books in there. This area here is where we actually set the definition for the type of book that we're going to use. Now all these definitions, you can custom create them for any book or any manufacturer, but there's a ton of these definitions out on the Time Exposure website in the ProSelect Resources folder. Also, many of the labs have these available for download right on their site. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and check the style of the book that we're actually going to use. That sets the design parameters for me, so ProSelect knows exactly how to build that in Photoshop. So today we're going to use an 8 ACI 8x8 hinged album. All right, so now it knows when we start working with this, that's what our what we're actually going to use to, to build and output. Now, ProSelect has something very cool and very unique to itself. It's called Smart Filtering. And so with our Smart Filtering, what we're going to do is go down to our Smart Filter. It's right just above our Resources area there. I'm going to click on that, and I have an option for one opening Auto Create. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select that. Notice it automatically sets the rotation there. It brings up all my templates that contain just one image holder there. So we're going to go over our image list. I'm going to click on the first image. I have all 32 images in here, and we're going to build those all directly into a book. So I'm going to click on my first one. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of my image list, hold my shift key, and click the last one. They're all selected. Now all that I need to do is just grab any one of the images, and I'm going to drop it on one of these templates. That's the template that I want to use there. It's got a graphic block. Um, as a part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going through and it's actually populating now each one of those images. It's automatically rotating the template to the correct orientation. All right, great. You can see we've got everything there. Notice it started out right on the, um, our side one is a right-hand page, exactly what we needed. That's something we would set in the in the def book definition when that's created or when the when the labs actually created it. Um, if I want to move any of the pages around, we can easily move them. I just drop and drag them into different positions. We can just slide them all into different uh, positions. You can freely change the order. If we want to um, look closer to an image or a spread, we can just double click on it. If I want to crop that image, I just hit my C key or my scissors, hit my up and down arrow keys, and then I can crop the image. Let's go back to our thumbnail view there. And we can take and do any other adjustments we want on these images. So let's go ahead and let's take this image here and let's run a Photoshop action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my custom effects and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to choose vintage uh, age warm. So we're going to run on this one. So it's sending that out into Photoshop, just my original image, sending it out into Photoshop and actually processing it and bringing it back in. That's a cool thing about this. I can do this all right on the fly, right in ProSelect. Well, it looks like all of my uh, book is all set and ready to start um, applying styles. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to find a style. So I'm going to do a Command A to select both uh, pages in the spread, and I'm going to go down to my compos composite styles with graphic block. So when I click on there, there's a white textured gray, damask. Look at all these different options that we have. These are all included right in ProSelect. I'm just attaching my down arrow, and it's going through. Can you imagine the number of Photoshop templates I'd have to have? There's my one that I think looks great here. Select the teal. Now we're going to go back to our thumbnail view. So you can see how that temp or that style is just applied to one spread. Do Command A, and now I'm going to go right up to my recent style, select that one, and it's applying those styles to all the images in the book. Now I can apply styles on everything or just selected uh, 
spreads. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go to production. So I'm going to go to production, send book to production. Now what that does is that puts everything right into a production queue for me so Photoshop knows what to do. Now in order to take and produce those final images, what we want to do is we're going to go to our production module and we're going to go produce high res images, composite prints. This shows every one of the pages. So if I click on these, you can see in the thumbnail on the right exactly what the layout looks like. If I click on the bottom, that shows the individual image. I can open that image up into Photoshop um, as an original imported file, or I can open the RAW file in either Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom by just clicking on it. So if I was going to retouch the image in between, I would launch it out into Photoshop, do my retouching, then I would just save the image, tell ProSelect to relink the edited file, and everything would be linked with that uh, retouch file for me. All right, so once I've got everything selected there, I'm going to go over and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell it to check all here. So I'm going to go ahead and check all. That means it's going to process all the pages, and I'm going to click Make High Resolution Images. Well, now what happens is I can kind of just sit back and relax. I don't really have to do anything here because ProSelect and Photoshop is doing all the work. In the matter of just a minute or two, I will it'll take and go through and produce this whole book for me. You can see Photoshop is working in the background right here, and it's actually going through. Notice it doesn't even, it's producing these pages so fast you can barely see them. Now in this particular case, watch here, you can see I've actually got a plug-in, I uh, used a plug-in, the portraiture plug-in on that image, and so it actually ran that right on there. It knew because that was processed on there, it was ordered on that image, and so it knew exactly what to do. So it goes through and builds all these up faster than it can even really draw on the screen. All right, my job is completely done. Everything's produced out. So let's go out here to Finder and we we'll go ahead and take a look at this. So if we go out here and look in here, and you can see each one of our album pages there, they're completely done. I told it to go into flat and JPEGs. I can could have told it to go to PSD files, but I wanted these ready to go to the lab so I could just drop and drag them in my lab ordering software. There's the one that we had the aged warm action on. So you can see the pages, we got a final check on them, and they're all set, everything is ordered, numbered by sides, ready to go to the lab. Well, let's say that Grandma decides she wants an album. I can click the second album, and we're going to go through here, and now I'm going to choose a 5x5 five five album. So what I want to do here is I've decided that Grandma's going to have this 5x5 five five album. I'll go back to my original album here, and then what's going to happen here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select all those images. I'm going to hold my Option key, and we're just going to drag that up onto that album number 2. What it's doing right now is it's duplicating that whole book. Okay, you can see I'm in album two, and now I have everything duplicated the exact same book, but now it's in a five by five size. We're gonna go through and wanna change the style on it so we can give grandma a whole different look. So it looks like we created a new book, but just a few clicks, and I did create a new book, but a whole different look. There's all our styles. At this point, all we have to do is go ahead, click send selected book into production, and all of it's added into production and ready to go. So I can just run that book right in production, then upload it to the lab. Easy way to be able to take money. Very, very flexible in terms of what we can do with creating our books in ProSelect. All right, well, I want to go ahead and I want to take, and we're going to just go ahead and look at another album. I want to show you how we do multiple um, image albums here. We've got several images on a page. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll go ahead and save this album. There we go. All right, everything's saved on that album, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a new senior album. Now, this is one that I already did some work on the album, so you could get an idea what the layouts look like, but we're going to finish it off here, um, right in this demo here. So, here's our album. Now, let's take a look here. If you look here close at the, we're in thumbnail view, you can see there's different thumbnail icons on there. That's the... Uh, shows that particular image was used in a slideshow. That tells me it was used in a book. Um, that one, the image has been sold, it was in the shopping cart, and that's the icon for layout. So we can see a whole lot of information um, right within our uh, thumbnail view when we have all of our thumbnail tags enabled. All right, we're working with books now, and let's take a look at this album. You can see I've already created a good share of it here. I've already applied the style. But look at the beautiful layout here. I'm just flipping through the pages here. Uh, most of them are individual pages or spreads, and they get built um, all coming together there. But you can see how everything just flows nicely, how the style works. If I want to change anything on any of the images, like run a Photoshop action or do an image effect, we can very easily do that. We'll go ahead and we'll just simply click the um, C icon and go ahead and select a sepia. 
there you can see we can actually now apply sepia tone to both those images. Notice how we can have images that are faded into the background or ones that drop back in. If you want to do any cropping, click an image, tap the C key, use my up and down arrow keys, and I can move it around right in the slot. There we go. We can adjust it exactly where we want it. Tap the C key again, and that takes it out of the cropping mode. All right, back to our thumbnail view here. And we're ready to go ahead and we're going to create some more pages here. So I'm going to close my image sets here. And what I want to do is I want to go here and I want to tell it to actually hide the images that have already been used in the book. So we do that right down there at the bottom of our image list. We're going to expand it so I can see more images all together there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually enable smart filtering. Remember we used smart filtering before on the auto build. Now we're going to use it to be able to help us find templates. I have thousands of templates in my system. And so what I'm going to do here is we're going to go down here, we're going to turn on smart filtering. I'm going to tell it to filter based on the number of openings and orientation. I can also tell it what categories I want it to look at and what particular groups. So I've selected several groups. These happen to be ones from our composite collection, album collection one. And so it's just sorting through all of the images there. Notice now it brought up just the templates. Right now it's just showing my single uh, image templates. As soon as I start clicking on images here, you're going to notice that the templates will start changing in terms of what's available for that particular grouping. So go ahead, we're going to click one there. All right, now it's going to hold my command key and start selecting more images. There it's got two selected. Now I'm adding three. Now see what it's done, it's brought up the templates for three images based on that orientation. So the correct number, two verticals and one horizontal. Anytime we see the rounded arrow in the corner, what's going to happen is that means that that template's actually going to be able to rotate. My eye may not recognize that that template would work, but as soon as that rotates 90 degrees, it is workable. So we can scroll through there and find a layout that we like. Once I find the layout that I like, all that I need to do is go to my image list and I just simply drag and drop the images on that layout. It auto-populates it. It puts the verticals in the vertical, the horizontal or squares in the square, so everything is right and easy. I can crop, make any adjustments if I want. Let's do another page. We're going to four images this time. Now it brings up all my templates. You expand that image list and we can see more templates here in the list. So you can, depend on your screen size and the size of your uh, thumbnails, you can show more. All right, I'm just going to drag that down. You can see it populated that template. All we have to do is double click on the layout and bring it up. Click on an image. If I want to switch positions of any of the images, I just drop and drag it to a new position. Hold my Option key. I can move the images around the opening. Or if I need to crop, I tap the C key. Once again, use those up and down arrow keys. And I can move that image around within the opening. I have one final image to use in this layout. I'm going to go ahead and clicked on it, brought up all my single opening layouts there, drag it down onto a template, and it's done. This allows me the creativity to be able to work very, very quickly, but yet have control over my layout. Well, we need to go through, we need to actually take and apply the styles now. So I've selected these three images. I'm going to go to my recent styles, and I'm just going to select my jewel tone. You can see now I've actually created the style, added that same style onto the whole book. If I want to use a totally different style on the book or just a different style on some of the pages, I could do that, of course, too. Ready to send it into production? All we have to do is go send book to production, and all of that is now loaded into my production queue. Let's go ahead and go into our high res production here and go to our composite tabs. And now you can see all of the layouts. Everything is set there, ready to get built in Photoshop. Once again, it shows my layouts, my images below. And of course, I can launch either of those individual images right out into Photoshop to do any retouch. I'm going to check click all and make high res images. I'm not going to process these files right now, so we'll just go ahead and close this dialog. It makes it very easy to be able to show my images to my clients because I have several ways of doing that. The easiest is simply clicking the slideshow button. And again, it creates a beautiful dissolved slideshow. The slideshow could even be uh, sent out, exported out into a, an MP4 movie, a full high def video. If we wanted a watermark, if we're going to put on Facebook or something like that, we could watermark the video. Lots of different flexibility. We can even print out. Uh, contact sheets which would show all the album pages and all the individual uh, images that appear on each one of the pages if we want to have the client actually sign off on the order. ProSelects Working With Books is the industry's most flexible album building software. From single image per page auto build books to ProSelects Intelligence Smart Filtering, it leaves you in control of the design all while working fast. Templates are available for purchase 
but hundreds are available for free at the ProSelect resources or on the websites of some of the nation's most popular labs and album companies. You can, of course, quickly create all the templates you want all on your own. When you're designing your album, you can crop, run Photoshop actions, convert images to black and white or sepia, launch images into Photoshop, all right from within ProSelect. Change your mind a few minutes or a week later, it's not a problem. You can easily go back and change it. You can create your own styles for page backgrounds and borders or use any of the many included styles right in ProSelect. All the styles I showed right in this presentation are included with ProSelect. You can even use PSD templates and automatically change the text right on the pages all right from within ProSelect while using Photoshop. Once you've completed the album, just a few clicks and Photoshop takes over building all the pages in either JPEGs or PSD files. The choice is yours. Working with books is fast, flexible, and virtually unlimited in design possibilities. Best of all, it's just another great part of ProSelect Pro.